All right. In this little video, I'm going to solve a problem involving seasonality and a trend. And um, I feel like a late night telemarketer sort of uh, uh, person with my five step process here. But really, this is how it works. Step one, we're going to calculate seasonal factors or seasonal indexes or seasonal relatives or whatever you want to call it. Step two, we're going to take the seasonality out of the data points by deseasonalizing them, that is by dividing the original data points by the seasonal indexes that we calculated. Step three, a linear regression is done through the data points. Step four, <coughs> project that trend out into the future. And then step five, multiply that straight line by the seasonal indexes. So the uh, problem I'm going to work on here, we have some data. The quarters got cut off, but obviously this is first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter of three years from long, long ago. So in order to find the seasonal factor for each period, um, seasonal index, whatever you want to call it, um, we need to take the average from a particular period and divide it by the average of the averages. So if you look at the first period, first quarter, 180 and 200 and 240, those average 206.7. So, oh, I just messed up my, there we go. So to get the seasonal index for the, uh, let's see, I did the second quarters here in my little notes as I was getting ready, so we'll do the second quarter. So the average for the second quarter is 186.7, and the overall average is 171. Boy, I'll just do a disclaimer here. A, I have terrible handwriting, and B, this little tablet just doesn't work exactly like a pencil, so I've got two handicaps here, but I'm doing the best I can. So if you take that and put it in your calculator, 186 is a little, little bigger than 171, so we should have a number that's a little bit bigger than one, but, but not a lot. So it should be 1.087 is what I got from my calculator when I just did this. And uh, on a test, say, I wouldn't have already calculated this for you, but we can see that we got, ta-da, the exactly right number. Okay, so step two we can deseasonalize the data for a particular period. And, um, wow, I'm not sure. So, let's see here. I'm going to deseasonalize this data point here. This is the second period from the second um, the year of data. So, to get the deseasonalized value for that, um, we will take the actual value, which is 195, and we will divide it by the seasonal index, 1.087. It doesn't matter exactly how many decimal places you use on these seasonal indexes. Obviously, the, the, the number will, that you use will impact the answer that you get, but I would say at least two is enough. Three is, is also good. Make for sure you don't need more than that. All right, so apparently I forgot to finish that part as I was getting myself ready here, so I have to I write it down. So 195, no, yes, come on. All right, 195 divided by 1.087 is 179.4. So 100. 79.4. So then we could we could do that for every single data point. And um, oh, by the way, I meant to say at the start. Here we have a graph of our data, and you can see that this data definitely has a lot of seasonality going for it. So we have one, two, three, four periods there. That's not a straight line. One, two, three, four periods. I can't count. One, two, three, 
four periods there. Uh, and so you, it's it's a very similar pattern year over year. Not exactly the same, but, but very similar. Obviously, the third quarter sales go down to nothing. So we've deseasonalized one period. Uh, if we wanted to say deseasonalize the second period of the second, the third year, pardon me, we would take 220. And again, for the second period, we always deseasonalize by dividing by that same seasonal index. There's only one the seasonal index is an average of what the seasonal seasonality generally is for that second quarter. So you take 220 divided by 1.0. Seven, and we get 202.4. So over the second period, um, this deseasonalized number here of ah. So I have to take my pen just off the screen in order to change the code. Every time I do it, it wants to make the, the 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 drawing tip like the size of a like spray paint or something. So 179.4. Um, we were at 179, 195 originally, so it's a number just, oops, sorry. Um, we were doing the second period of the second year. Um, so we were at 195 originally, 179 would be somewhere around in there. The second quarter from the third year, we got 202, which is going to be um, somewhere right around there. Uh, so third step here is to do a linear regression through the deseasonalized points. So the whole reason for getting these deseasonalized points is to try to take the seasonality out of it and then we're going to try to estimate the growth rate of those deseasonalized data points. So I have already done that for you. Again, I promise I would never ever ask you to do a linear regression by hand. That would be cruel and barbaric and just mean. So I have already done one for you. You can see that the intercept is 130, so that would be somewhere around here, and the slope is a little over 6, so we have 12 periods worth of growth, so um, 12 times 6.2866 is 75, so adding that on to 130, so by the time we get to the far, si oops, this far side here, we're at 205, so we're right around there, so it is hopeless to think I'm going to draw a reasonably straight line here, but I'm going to just... Not bad. A little didn't climb up quite where I wanted, but you see what I'm trying to say here. So we get a deseasonalized line through those points. And if we projected it on into the future, it would look something kind of like that. So there, I just did step four, projecting the trend. Uh, just in a very kind of ballpark sort of way. We want to know the exact number. So let's um, let's uh, try to see where we think things are going to be in 2002. So we had four periods here, and then we had eight periods, and then we had 12 periods, and this was 1999 and then 2000, and then 2001. So if we're talking about 2002, and the second quarter of 2002, how many periods into our data set will we be? Well, that's 4, 8, 12, 13, 14. So that would be period 14. So our, uh, our linear forecast, if you want to call it that, is going to be the intercept, 130.8, plus our slope, 6. Point, we'll call it 6.29, multiplied by the period, which is 14. So what do we get? We get 6.29 times 14 is 88.06. So we have 130.8 plus 88.06, which gives us 
0.86, so I'll call it 218.9, which is a little higher. Well, it's not too far off from where my line is. My line's not, as we know, not very good, but it's somewhere around there. So then, lastly, to make the, the, the seasonalized forecast, Um, we're going to take that number that we just got, 218.9, and we're going to multiply it by the seasonal index that we already calculated, 1.087. So 218.86 times 1.087, and we get, as our seasonal forecast, 230. Point two. So that's the last step, and um, we could do this for. We would need to do this for every quarter to find the seasonal index for each particular quarter, um, and that's just how it works. Um, so hopefully that helps.